Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Travis Dykes. Today, we are going over everything you need to know about arpeggios. When I was just starting out on bass, like arpeggios are so hard to understand and so hard to implement. So I wanted to give you guys a simple understanding of what they are, how you can practice them. Also, I wanna show you which ones are essential for any style of music. So if you guys want any of the tabs, tracks, or loops for any of my videos, feel free to check out my Patreon, which is linked below. I just opened up this new tier where I'm doing one-on-one -on -one feedback videos with patrons. So if you're working on a lick, a track, or working on anything, you can ask me advice and I will send you a video giving you, just you, advice on how to improve every month. So without further ado, why don't you grab your bass and we'll jump into the lesson. So the first question you probably are asking, what are arpeggios? Basically, all arpeggios are, are chords played one note at a time. If you don't know what a chord is, all chords are, are a grouping of notes played together at the same time that create harmony. So the reason why it's so essential that bass players know how to use arpeggios and how to play arpeggios is because it's like the sweet note when it comes to making licks or grooves. Like when you hear somebody play something nasty and you're just like, mm, what is that? What, like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what, you, what you're doing. A lot of those times, it's a mixture between arpeggios and scales. So imagine if you're playing a progression or you're playing over a progression, it's a major chord in some places, minor chord in some places. What arpeggios do is they bring out those major sounds and those minor sounds depending on what chord the person who's playing the progression is playing them. So knowing them gives your licks a new depth, like a, a greater color, like it makes it stand out even more. And the reason why they're important on bass as well is because bass players, we're not guitar players where we play chords like every single song. You can play chords on bass, but not always in every context. What the bass is supposed to be is the bed, the foundation, the glue, to glue everything together. So most of the time when we're in the glue and we're in our zone is when we're playing one note at a time. But sometimes it gets kind of boring if you're just playing one note at a time. You want to do something to add some flavor to it. So now, that's when these arpeggios start to become important because it's like, oh, I can add flavor without doing a chord and getting on top of my guitar player. I can sit here and just make some, like make a cool, you know, arpeggio over this groove and make it sound sick and make it feel really, really good. If you're debating on if you really need to focus in on arpeggios and you're an intermediate player or even an advanced player, you need to make sure you focus in on arpeggios because they can take your playing to another level. So now we're gonna learn some foundational arpeggios that you will encounter in just about any genre of music. So the first arpeggio we're gonna learn is the major and minor triad. All triads are, are three note chords. Our major triad is a one, three, and a five. So for so the key of A would be this. Okay, and a minor triad is just the same, pretty much the same notes except for one note. The, f the three, the three is flat like this. So instead of playing it here, it's gonna be played here. I'm gonna change up my format just so it's a little easier, like this. All right, so the way I like to play them, I have two string form and I have three string form. So two string form is less just like I played, I'm gonna play a major triad again, which is like this. That's two string form. Now three string form, we're gonna span it over three strings like this. All right. Same way with the minor. We're gonna do the two string form minor arpeggio like this. Then three string form like this. You can also do it in four string form, but that's not one that I use that often. I'm gonna give you guys ones that I actually use when I play. Just for these triads, we're gonna stick with the two string and three string form. Now the next essential chord that you need to know is the major seven chord or arpeggio. All it is is a triad, but you add a fourth note, which gives it a little bit more color. So watch this. So our major triad is a one, three, five for A. So we got one, three, and five. For our major seven, all we're gonna do is add a seven to it. So we should get this. 
And that is our major seven arpeggio. Now for a minor seven arpeggio is pretty much is what we did before. We're changing our flat three to make it minor. Get the minor triad. But instead of playing this seven here, we're going to flat that seven, play the flat seven to get that minor seven sound. So yeah. Another essential chord that you need to know when it comes to arpeggios is the dominant seven. It's pretty much it starts off with the major triad like we did before, the one, three, and the five. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the flat seven. So we're gonna do one, three, five, and that flat seven. So my last essential chord that you should know in arpeggio is the diminished seven chord. So one of the main ways you lock in these arpeggios to your memory and, and are able to put them in your playing is learning how to play them horizontally and diagonally. This is something that I've learned over the years when it comes to playing these and really getting them in your playing and be, being able to play them all the way up the neck. So we're gonna take the triads first. What we're gonna do is play our major triad horizontally like this. So we're gonna, basically what we're gonna do is gonna play our one, three, and our five. But instead of just stopping on this five, we're just gonna continue with the whatever is left, which is the one here and the three here. So we get this. So now let's check it out diagonally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play our one, three, five, just like normal. And then we're gonna scope out our one on our D string, which is right here, because you see the octaves are right here. So our one's right here. And we're just gonna play that same pattern right here. So now watch this. All together, one, three, five, one, three, five. All right, so now let's check out our minor triad going horizontally. All right, so we got our one, flat three, five, one, the one octave, and our flat three there. So here we go, we got our one, flat three, and five. Now we're just gonna extend it out. We got our one right here. We use our index finger. And then we're gonna do flat three and five. So you should get this. And I like to use my index finger right there to kind of bridge the gap. Just like that. So now let's take a look at our major seven chord horizontally. All together. So now let's take a look at our minor seven arpeggio horizontally. Just like that. So now let's take a look at our dominant seven chord going horizontally. And last but not least, we have our diminished seven arpeggio horizontally.
So now what we're gonna talk about is inversions. This is something that I've really been wanting to talk about on my channel for a long time now because this whole idea concept changed my life. Let's start off with our major triad. So we have, we're in the key of A and we play our major triad like this. We got our one, our three, and our five. What inversion says, it says, let's start on my three and then play the same triad, but just on the three, starting on the three. Okay, so three, there's the five, and there's the one. Okay, so same chord, same notes, have a little bit of a different sound, a little bit of a variation. Is the reason why this is so important, it's so life-changing, is that when you do it on the same string, just like what you would on pentatonic scales and uh, major scale modes. So watch this, if I played one, three, five, like this, one, three, and five. And I find the other notes that go with it, like the five and the one. When I go to this three on my E string, I'm gonna find wherever the five and the one is. So I'm gonna give you guys a little help on this. I'm gonna start right here on this three with my index finger. So three, and so that means my five is, it's right here. Then my one, oh yeah, yeah, one's right here. So now I have a, a inversion of that triad. It makes it sound a little bit different. Now watch this, I'm gonna play the first one. All right, next one. Okay, so that is how inversions work. So I'm gonna show you the fifth one too. So watch this, so we're gonna start with our five. So it's just like our five here, just on, this, on the E string. So watch this, we're gonna do five, one, and then three is right there. So let's do it in two string forms. And those are my major triad inversions. So now, just like I did the beginning with just learning how to do the triads in two, four, two string form and three string form, you could do the same thing with these inversions. All right, now let's take a look at that minor triad on two string form. So we got our one, flat three, and five. So here's the inversion, flat three, five, and one. All right, so now here's the last inversion of it. Starting on the five, we got our five, one, and flat three. So here it is in three string form. One, flat three, five. The inversion starting on the flat three, we got flat three, five, and one. Then we have, starting on the five, five, one, and flat three. I'm gonna go kind of quick through the rest of these, so make sure you rewind the video if I go a little too fast. Here's the major seven root position. One, three, five, seven, five, three, one. The inversion, here we go. Three, five, seven, one, seven, five, three. Let's take a look at the one starting on five. Five, seven, one, three, one, seven, five. Now we have the one that starts in the seven way up here where the octave is. So we get seven, one, three, five, three, one, seven. So now let's take a look at the minor seven. Uh, root position, one, flat three, five, flat seven. Inversion, starting from the flat three. All right, so inversion starting from the five. Now inversion starting on the minor seven or the flat seven. All right, now let's take a look at that dominant seven. We are one, three, five, dominant seven or flat seven, five, three, and one. Right, let's take a look at that inversion. Three, five, flat seven, one. All right, take a look at the next inversion, starting on five. Five, flat seven, 
One, three, five, three, one. All right, so now the last one uh, for dominant seven would be. Starting on the flat seven. So the last one we're gonna tackle is the diminished seven. One, flat three, flat five, six, one. This one's actually super easy because you're literally doing the same pattern for each of them. So the next note and scale, we got that flat three. That's the next one. So, all right, the same pattern for the flat five. Same pattern for the six. So make sure you practice these, go over them, make sure you get all these inversions because it's just like I said before, this is gonna help move us to the next part of this video. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take what we've learned at the beginning of this video and apply it to our inversions. Just like when we were learning how to play our arpeggios horizontally and diagonally, we wanna do that with our inversions. So here it is uh, horizontally with a major seven. and diagonally with a major seven. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this, and I'm not gonna show you all of them because I gave you some hints on how, what they start off with when I was going over all the inversions. So what you have to do is you have to figure out what's the rest of it. What's, the, what's it all the way down horizontally and what's it going all the way up diagonally. It's pretty simple. I'm going to show you what it's like for the give you an example on the major seven. So what I'm going to do is take my inversion, which is this of the major seven. And I'm going to play it horizontally all the way down. So like this. And remember how you figure that out. So I got my three, five, seven, one are what's left in this chord. So we got three, Five. Okay, and there's no seven real close, so we're just gonna go back. So this one's actually pretty easy to do diagonally because all you're doing is three, five, seven, one, and then you're just playing that same pattern up an octave. See that? Most of them are gonna be just like that where you're just going up an octave and you're, you're doing it. So just take your time and figure these out. It's gonna strengthen and cause you to master it so quickly. All right, so here's the last thing we're gonna learn about arpeggios today. So when it comes to making licks, grooves, or anything like that, the, what makes a lick or groove so great is when you connect it to something else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our arpeggios to our pentatonic scale. And what that's gonna do is give us a really, really cool sounding lick. If I play my A major seven arpeggio all the way horizontally like this. This whole arpeggio is within a pentatonic scale position, which is the first one right here. See that? So what we're going to do is we're going to play our major seven all the way horizontally. And then we're going to come back on the pentatonic scale like this. So watch this. See that? So we wanna do this with all of our inversions. We're gonna connect it, connect it as well to the inversion of this major seven. So we got this right here. So this is all the way horizontally. And now we're on the third position of the pentatonic scale, which is this right here. Now watch this. I'm gonna go up this inversion all the way, all the way horizontally. And now we're gonna come back down, pentatonic. Same way with the one on the five. We got. Then we got the fourth position of the pentatonic scale. 
So now let's take a look going diagonally. So watch this. So we're going to play our major seven diagonally. And now what we're going to do is now we're in the second position of the pentatonic scale. All right. Do the same thing with the inversion. Now we're on that fourth position of the pentatonic scale right here. And I'll give you a little help on the minor seven and the minor chords. If you're playing in the minor, playing that minor arpeggio, you wanna think that you're on the sixth or the last pentatonic scale position before it starts back over on the one. So basically, it'll be you'll be thinking about like you're in the key of C on playing a, the C major pentatonic, and you're just going backwards, and you have that minor pentatonic or that fifth position pentatonic scale, and that's where that minor arpeggio will be. You want to do this with every particular chord. We're connecting the arpeggios to our pentatonic scale because when you create that, it makes it not only not sound like a exercise, but it sounds like a lick. So as you're doing this, you are mastering these patterns and really causing them to be locked into your memory. So the main thing I want you to take away from this lesson is to take the things you know and learn how to put them with the new things you know. And what will happen is that you start to master what you know. Because a lot of times, a lot of people know a pentatonic scale, they know the major scale, but they don't, never thought about putting those two together. Or they know, don't know arpeggio and know the pentatonic scale, but they never thought of putting those two together. So just take your time with this and just work on it and master it. Because the more and more that you do it and the more and more you practice it, and the more and more you just take your time to understand it, it will take your playing and your creativity to another level. If you have any questions about any of the things that I covered today, feel free to hit me up on my Instagram, at T Dykes, or drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified when the newest videos are uploaded. Don't forget to check out my Patreon where you can get all my loops, tabs, tracks, and also one-on-one -on -one video feedback lessons. All of that's on my Patreon is linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.